What's up guys? My name's Alex and today I'm going to be showing you how to diagnose the hemi tick. What it is and how it happens. This is my 2017 Dodge Ram 1500 with the old Hemi 5.7. I always thought the Hemi tick came from just poor maintenance or just, you know, the oddball bad luck. As it turns out, it looks like Chrysler has made a pretty detrimental design flaw with these engines, which results in the 5.7 Hemis pretty much eating their own cam. The best way to probably determine whether or not your tick is an exhaust leak or an actual internal tick is one of two options. What you can do is go to the store and grab a stethoscope. They're usually, you can get a cheap one for like five bucks. And honestly, it works very well. Just put the stethoscope on the top of the engine block on each side, whatever side the tick is coming from. If it is an internal tick and you have your stethoscope on the upper side of the block there, it should be pretty obvious to you that it is internal. If it's an exhaust leak, you won't hear anything when your stethoscope is on the block. So that's a good way to tell um, whether or not it's an exhaust leak or if it's an actual engine tick because I know these engines again are absolutely notorious for um, exhaust leaks which again actually compounding the issue of the engine tick because people tend to misdiagnose it oh it's just an exhaust leak when it could actually be your lifters just slowly destroying your cam lobes. Another good way to see if it's an exhaust leak or an internal tick is to actually go to the back of your truck. My truck has two exhausts. Um, and just plug them up with something. Don't totally plug them up, but if you plug one of them up or both of them up and the tick becomes louder, odds are you have an exhaust leak. If it stays the same, odds are you're looking at something internal. And so if you do have what seems to be an internal tick, the next step is to check for engine codes. If you have any codes, P300, P301 to P308, which is a misfire, um, you definitely wanna take a look into those. Now, if you do throw one of those codes, definitely wanna check spark first. Wanna make sure your fuel injectors are firing correctly. From what I've seen, fuel injection, fuel injectors don't seem to be the issue really at all. Um, definitely make sure you have spark. Um, if it's, you know, let's, let's say if it's still, let's say if it's, I don't know, cylinder eight. Um, you wanna move that coil to the next cylinder beside it. And if the misfire follows that coil, obviously you have a bad coil, replace the coil. Hopefully that's everything. If it does not move with the coil, then we are probably looking at something a little more serious, which is what I'll get into in a sec here. Odds are we're dealing with a lifter cam failure. More specifically, a lifter roller needle bearing failure. It seems to be what is failing on these Hemis pretty consistently, which is kind of scary. Let's dive into the mechanical side of why this is actually happening. All right, guys, this is your typical 5.7 liter Hemi third gen engine. Fun fact, guys, the first Hemi design engine was actually put into a P47 Thunderbolt fighter plane during World War II. It was an inverted V16 engine rated at well over 2000 horsepower. But getting back to our engine, uh, this is the front of the Hemi and we can see the crankshaft and the camshaft location here. Why are the lifters constantly failing on the Hemi? And it's very simple. There is not enough lubrication reaching the roller or the cam lobe itself. The lifter themselves are oiled through the push rods. However, there is no actual oil gallery or feed through the lifter to get to the actual rollers or the roller bearings. Furthermore, any additional oil drainage from the lifter bore themselves is outboard of the cam lobes, resulting in the oil simply dripping back to the crankcase and avoiding gripping on the camshaft lobe. With an in-block cam design, this is not an issue because as we mentioned earlier, the rotating assembly is spraying off so much oil in close proximity to the camshaft itself, it is always gonna be drenched in oil. However, with the Hemi's single overhead cam design and the cam being further away from the engine's rotating assembly, it does not have the luxury of constantly being splashed with oil. 
So if the lifter rollers do not get enough lubrication from the lifters or from the rotating assembly splashing oil up onto them, the needle bearings will starve for oil causing them to fail. This specifically comes into play when the Hemi is at idle or low RPM situations. At engine speeds above 1500 RPM, the engine assembly is spinning fast enough to throw up oil onto the cam and adequately lube up the cam and rollers. So try and reduce your idle times with this engine to preserve the life of your lifters and avoid the old dreaded heavy tick. So what do you know, this engine isn't all sunshines and rainbows, but no engine is. Every engine usually has its flaw and its benefits, and this is uh, no exception. Try not to idle this thing, or idle it as little as possible because as I said, the cam can be lubricated from splash oil coming off the rotating assembly crankshaft. And when the engine is at low RPMs, less oil is gonna be flung up to those camshafts and rollers, which is where you're gonna see your damage. So if the engine is at, let's say 2000 RPM, just under that, you're probably gonna be okay with some good splash coming off the rotating assembly and everything's gonna be lubed up okay. It's when you're in low RPM situations where that overhead cam is gonna see some low lubrication situations and that will cause those needle bearing failures. Now, before I go any further, I do have to mention Uncle Tony's Garage. He has an absolutely amazing video on this topic. He's got a stripped down engine block and goes even further into the design flaw of this 5.7 Hemi. I'll link his info down below. Go check it out. It's got some great information. Now I have also heard about people saying it's just bad Chinese bearings, bad cheap Chinese roller bearings or needle bearings in those uh, lifter rollers. I don't know. Um, when you start to see multiple lifter rollers failing on the same engine, is it fluke that three of them fail at the same time? I don't know, it seems to all point to one main problem. Chrysler, in 2017, they updated their, um, or sorry, no, in 2016, they updated their lifter roller bearings, apparently. They're supposed to be better, but if indeed the, you know, lubrication is 100% the issue, that's not gonna fix anything. You know what I mean? You can throw as many new um, special bearings in there. If it's not lubricated properly, it's not gonna do anything. And that kind of brings me to my last point. Um, Chrysler really hasn't said much on this issue. And it's interesting because it's definitely an issue. You can go on all kinds of forums and it's like the number one thing, the hemi tick, the hemi tick, the hemi tick, the hemi tick. I don't know what Chrysler's thinking. Maybe they're, they're seeing that, hey, these these engines make it, make it out of warranty, so who cares, right? So it'll be interesting to see if Chrysler ever does come out with, a, with any kind of recall or any kind of um, course of action for these uh, lifter fails. Uh, you know, keep me in your prayers, pray for me, pray for my engine, that it doesn't get the notorious hemi tick. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up the video for today. I hope you found that helpful and maybe even learned a thing or two. Let me know what you think. Do you think Chrysler will ever address this lifter issue or do you think they'll just keep sweeping under the rug? It'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, I do apologize about the audio quality. Um, I have a microphone coming. It should be in the mail actually tomorrow. But yeah guys, as always, if you like the video, throw me a thumbs up and maybe even think about subscribing because I have a lot of RAM stuff coming down the line and uh, it should be fun. Anyways guys, we will see you on the next video.